so now Arjun will speak about <coughs> NFS Kanisha. Um, Arjun works for Red Hat in the Bangalore office in India. I'm very happy to have him here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Niels. Uh, well, yeah, I'm Arjun Sharma. I've been with Red Hat for about one and a half year now, and I'm a part of the NFS Ganesha team at Red Hat in Bangalore office, India. So I'll just start right away. I think I'll just turn it. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, perfect. All right, so the outline of my talk is something like, I'll start off with uh, the introduction of NFS Ganesha, and I'll explain about its architecture. I'll talk about the uh, about a component of NFS Ganesha, which is a, uh, a configuration file known as the Ganesha.conf. Then I'll move on to NFS Ganesha features, and I'll yeah, and uh, I'll also compare NFS Ganesha with kernel NFS, and uh, yeah, and then I'll talk about since I'm mostly working with uh, Gluster FS and not Ceph, uh, I do not touch Ceph or RGW at all. I'll talk about Gluster with uh, uh, with NFS Ganesha. And then I'll talk about some recent developments or ongoing developments in NFS Ganesha. And then finally, I hope uh, to get some feedbacks regarding uh, transport layer security. It's it's one of the, I think, hot topics in NFS, I guess. So yes, I'll move on. Right, so NFS Ganesha, like most of you here, I guess, know what NFS Ganesha is. Uh, so it's, it's basically, it's a user, it, these are NFS, uh, servers in user space, NFS Ganesha basically allows you to uh, hold NFS servers in user space and uh, it supports uh, your version 3, 4 and your PNFS with uh, and also 9P protocol, 9P for the Plan 9 operating system. Uh, the version 3 of uh, NFS was uh, oh, stateless, stateless uh, and, and from version 4 uh, it was stateful. So I know most of you all probably know what stateless and stateful is but let me just uh, rephrase for stateless is so basically yeah uh, stateless stores no client information you know like the FD the file FD uh, next byte to read and etc stuff like that or uh, but instead it uh, supports the lookup uh, procedure that converts the file name to a file handle uh, yeah which is a unique identifier like uh, it's prob it's mostly the inode number uh, for the file and uh, yeah I mean NFS Ganesha has Fazal which is called file system abstraction layer, and I'll be talking more about Fazal. I'll be talking about Fazal a couple of times in my presentation. So the architecture, right. Uh, on the top, uh, we have uh, the network layer, the network 4 channel. It actively listens and uh, captures your uh, network request from the client, uh, which the request then passes through an RPT RPC dispatcher. Uh, here, uh, the request, uh, the RPC dispatcher uh, decodes your request uh, into an RPC, and, and uh, the RPC dispatcher here uses a sub, sub, uh, uh, sub. Uh, I'm sorry, sub uh, project, uh, uh, sub, sub directory, sub program uh, known as the libNTI RPC that is used to implement RPC, and then the request passes through a duplicate uh, request layer. And also NFS Ganesha supports RPC sec uh, GSS for uh, your user space uh, user space applications like uh, Curb5. Uh, and uh, then uh, from there the request passes to the protocol layer depending upon which protocol you're using, version 3, 4, whichever it is. And uh, from the pro protocol layer it passes uh, to the actually, so I was half asleep when I made this diagram. Uh, just, just imagine the SAL layer to be on top of the MD cache layer, and uh, yeah, I mean the request from the protocol layer. The request passes to the SAL layer, uh, and the SAL layer converts the the request to an operation. For example, the write operation to a uh, write request to a write operation, read request to a read operation, and then it uh, the MD cache layer basically stores your uh, the metadata cache uh, for the particular request. And then finally, we have the Fazal layer, the file system abstraction layer. Uh, depending on uh, what uh, backend file system are we using, Gluster, Ceph, RG, uh, whatever it is, uh, it uh, yeah, it communicates with that, and uh, that goes onto your backend file system. So it makes more sense to have file system uh, Fazal here since it's easier for uh, uh, NFS Ganesha to also interact with other user space applications like Curve Five, I love. And then uh, we have Dbus that 
basically in a way controls the entire NFS Ganesha process. So you can uh, dynamically send DBus messages to uh, you know uh, dynamically export and export and uh, do other things. And yeah, we also have logging. Depending on log levels, you can uh, log the results, uh, the progress. Uh, I mean the yeah logging basically. Okay, so the configuration file. Uh, although the configuration file has a lot more things, I'm just pointing out the I'm, I'm touching upon the main parts here, main main components. So first we have the NFS code uh, parameter, <coughs> right? So here, uh, yeah, if if the uh, block is not defined, it picks up the default uh, default values for it. It's basically used for uh, defining uh, your uh, ports to be used for the particular share for uh, for particular share, and then we have the export block. Where you can export uh, your uh, file system, uh, 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 your uh, the shares that you want to export. Uh, it can be multiple. Expo you can export multiple file systems, and then we have the yeah. It's a generic block, the NFS uh, curb five. So uh, here you basically, uh, for example, the NFS curb five block will communicate with uh, if I'm using uh, curb five for authentication. So this block basically is used to modify functions and options for uh, my curb five. And uh, then we have the NFS v4, as the name suggests. It's basically used to, uh, you know, uh, limit if you want to just uh, go ahead with uh, NFS 4.1 and not 4.2. So yeah, it's it's mainly for that. And then you have the cache anode layer, uh, the the cache anode block, that's used to set options for caching. And finally, we have the log block, uh, where you can modify log levels uh, for each for 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 the, uh, for the fizzle layers uh, to. You know, to store logs. Features. Okay, uh, so NFS, uh, uh, yeah, let me just start by saying, uh, talking about Fazal, file system abstraction layer. And uh, so uh, it, it's, it, it's, Fazal is basically, yeah, it, it's, it's like a plugin that's written in NFS Ganesha for, uh, for your backend file systems. So basically, if you have a file system that you have, and uh, you know, if you have an uh, you have a library that uh, supports, I mean, you would write a library in your file system to uh, in, uh, to integrate it with NFS. You can write a Fazal in NFS Ganesha for it, and then you can just straight up use your uh, file system with NFS Ganesha. So that's where Fazal is handy, and then uh, it supports your dynamic e uh, exports using Dbus mechanism. I spoke about this in during the architecture. So you can basically give dbus commands to dynamically export and unexport your uh, file systems you won't have to shut down your entire server and restart and do that so you can dynamically just give commands and you know export a, one of a few shares and not the entire not all the shares that you are exporting yeah it's uh, it's it's in the user space so i think which is why it's idle for huge uh, metadata caching and uh, also we have uh, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure about an, uh, kernel NFS. I think it's it's if it's not impossible, it's uh, it's complex, a bit complex to uh, to you know uh, implement high availability. High availability, uh, most of you know, it's basically you know it's for servers uh, if uh, to basically prevent failovers. So if in, in case I have like multiple servers that are actively serving my clients, so if one server goes down, I have the other servers to support. I mean to uh, service. Uh, for that, so that's what uh, HA is for, and we use uh, pacemaker and coercing, which are actively developed uh, by Red Hat, especially. And uh, yeah, pacemaker and coercing. If I have to touch up on it, uh, pacemaker, I'd say is is like a, in essence, pacemaker is like a, it 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 decides how your cluster behaves, and coercing is like is is like a message. Is like a message channel that communicates between server and clients. Uh, so yeah, we uh, so it supports active-active configuration. So there's a difference between active and passive and active-active. So I'd say for the viewers, so most of you here know, I'd say that active-active uh, is uh, basically where uh, all your servers are up and running and serving your clients. Uh, uh, and and this is also good for your load balancing. Uh, depending on the situation, and whereas active passive, uh, you have uh, although there is redundancy, but you have just one server that's serving, and if it goes down, you have the other server that takes its place. Then, uh, yeah, security and auth mechanism. Yes, it 
communicates well with other user level applications like uh, five weld app so you have auth mechanism similar to kernel nfs i think it's way much easier uh, and it's user space so yes it's easier to work with easy to debug and uh, of course we are like a small team uh, and small team so we have a faster development cycle and uh, yes uh, faster development cycle it's it's not it's not chaotic and okay i think chaotic is not the right word here but yeah we have a faster development cycle integration with gluster fs so yeah uh, the firstly uh, the gluster fs has something called as the gf api the libgf api to communicate with the uh, with the nfs ganesha and uh, nfs ganesha uses uh, uh, it's, it's basically a, a wrapper uh, over the gluster protocol which yeah, interfaces with fazal gluster that's written in the nfs ganesha so nfs ganesha uses uh, gf api to communicate directly with the uh, gluster fs and uh, not go via the traditional <coughs> traditional uh, gluster fuse layer so performance is better in that way in that sense and uh, yeah we have the h implementation for nfs ganesha where uh, you use uh, as i spoke you use pacemaker and coercing for active active configuration here uh, you need i think at least uh, four servers to uh, carry out h implementation and uh, it uh, fails over seamlessly and you know uh, if let's say a, f a server uh, dies the most of the clients don't even realize it's dies and you know the administration administrator can go and bring up that server without any problem so nfs ganesha versus kernel kernel nfs <coughs> firstly i'd like to mention uh, performance wise of course it's kernel nfs that's that's that provides better performance but nfs ganesha is quite good it's not it's not that bad it has good performance it gives you good performance other than that uh, it's easier to debug with we all know how uh, daunting it can be to debug kernel nfs or kernel applications and uh, it's easier to scale out as compared compared to kernel nfs so uh, like uh, uh, scale out as in scale, there's a difference between scale out and scale up so let me just touch up on that uh, since most of you i think you know but I'll, I'll just say that uh, uh, so scale uh, scale up is where basically basically you have a box you have a machine and you add in more uh, cpu power you add in more rams you add in more memory and you add in more stuff to scale up the box and then there is only as much as you can put in and eventually you run out of space to do it and you scale up as much as you can but whereas in scale out you can uh, add in more boxes and then of course you can scale up those boxes so it's much easier to scale out with nfs ganesha as compared to kernel of nfs and yeah it's, uh, it's easy to access yeah since it's in the user space nfs ganesha is in the user space so it's easier for uh, nfs ganesha to communicate with other user space applications it's not as complex as kernel nfs although it's a bit complex but it's not as complex and yes we are a much smaller community so you know uh, we know how uh, so for development how daunting it can be to get your patches merged for uh, any kernel projects but here in nfs ganesha it's not it's not that bad and it's a, it's much faster so some recent slash ongoing developments <coughs> labeled nfs uh, so the labeled nfs right so basically uh, labeled nfs in short allows you to set security con sl linux context to to restrict processes from you know uh interacting with each other so uh, uh, for basically if a so if a client uh requests a file access uh from a server and uh, a server sends a request back uh access uh, to the client i mean these two processes for the same file are actually different so you don't want them to mix up and you can uh, you you have better security that way so uh, it was one of the the fe this feature i worked on i personally worked on this feature and it's it's been merged upstream uh De then we have delegation so uh this uh for delegation i'd say uh it's it's more or less as far as i understand so it's it, it's for better performance where uh, so where you where the you know a client doesn't have to speak to a uh, where the client doesn't have to speak to a server which then speaks with a uh with a 
with uh, with NFS Ganesha, and then that go uh, that uh, act to locate a file that, and then NFS Ganesha actually has to find uh, another server where the file is actually located. So delegation uh, allows you to allows the server to basically, uh, you know, delegate file data to the uh, to the client so that it can uh, directly uh, access the file. And then we have the sticky grace period. So for grace period, I'd like to touch upon what grace period here is. So when an NFS Ganesha server is up and running, uh, for a while, uh, it 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 takes them it takes some time to cool, uh, to to you know start a problem. So basically, in the starting, a uh, few of the file operations are uh, not permitted, so that uh, the servers can uh, you know uh, so so the clients that were communicating with the server earlier can have the locks for if there were any previous file operations going on. So here in the, uh, with sticky grace period, uh, the thing is uh, for in-flight operations, uh, like for some op file operations require uh, the server to be in a grace period and some don't. So for, uh, so here uh, with this uh, improvement, you have, uh, it, it overcomes the problem of in-flight in uh, file operations, so basically you don't flip uh, your uh, sticky uh, the grace period. Uh, so it, it basically suit, suited for a clustered clustered a cluster NFS Ganesha cluster, right? And then we have the async I/O. I think most of you know what async I/O is. Uh, yeah. Okay. So finally, I have uh, transport layer security. There is no, uh, as such right now, there's no proof of concept for it. And um, this, is, this is a project that uh, my, uh, my, uh, my team has been uh, asking me to you know, get a reaction from community, from uh, NFS enthusiasts like you. So you know, I urge, urge all of you to you know, participate, you know, uh, like chatter about transport layer security. Uh, since uh, we have curve five, but it's, it's it's a little bit complex, and you know you might as well have transport a TLS, uh, and so you know I'm hoping to get some reaction. Although there is nothing right now for it, so but depending on the reaction we get from the community and uh, uh, about the the I don't know any suggestions uh, that the community may have, we may start working on TLS. So please feel free to you know get in touch with me after the talk. If you have any suggestions, you may just raise your hand and you know say anything you like about it. Yeah, that's all and questions. Thanks, Arjun, for the talk. Uh, I have one question regarding this async IO you have mentioned in the cluster. Sorry. Regarding? I, I okay, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. so I have briefly worked in NFS Ganesha layer to develop our own proprietary file system. So I have used Async IO and 2.5 version of okay. NFS Ganesha. So I wanted to know, like, uh, what is the state of? Sorry, I use Async IO. I wanted to know what is the stage of Async IO? Are you guys in Gluster have already implemented upsell for Async? Or still, you guys are using sync, and it's still in the, you know, development phase, not in the production ready. In in case of cluster, I know that APIs are available from NFS Ganesha side, but how, like how robust they have been integrated with with the cluster. cluster. NFS. Just want to know your your view and how how team is doing okay. it. Okay. So uh, right, thank you for the question. Okay. Uh, so, uh, question. Uh, I, I'll repeat the question. The question basically was, how robust uh, is async IO with cluster FS? In short, right? So, okay. As far as I know, uh, that it's it's uh, the development is still going on, but it's still it's it's it is uh, better with cluster. It's 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 there, and it works well. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm saying this because. You also have an option for going just with the synchronous IO and not the async. So I think the async is in a pretty good state right now, but I'm not sure where it is exactly right now. So yeah, I mean, 
I'd be happy to, you know, shoot your mail with after I research about it a little bit more and then, you know, definitely follow up with you. Yes, please. Um, uh, just to, okay, okay, just to be up. Uh, <coughs> so we use the set of this with uh, an SD mission on top. And uh, I'm curious what you mentioned about the caching, uh, the empty cache layer. Uh, it sounds like that's, that's a major contribution to a potential uh, performance uh, benefit. Uh, in particular, with uh, considering the CFFS isn't terribly performant with uh, with the metadata, in particular in you know, small files. Uh, okay. Is that correct? Am I am I uh, should I focus on that and give it a dot of the cache area? Okay. Uh, so the question is uh, so, uh, for Seth. Since uh, metadata is, I think, an issue with Ceph, uh, and, and NFS Ganesha has an MD cache layer, uh, so should he just rely on NFS Ganesha's MD cache layer and shoot more MD, uh, more metadata for it? For that, uh, so firstly, I'd say I've, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with Ceph, like the, the problems and the limitations with Ceph, which, which Ceph has, although I've just about heard about it. I think metadata is a big, big of an issue in Ceph. Uh, but uh, so uh, uh, since I'm not that aware, what, what I'd say is yes. Since uh, so this is what my understanding is. Please jump in if you have something to add on, Niels. Since it's a user level, user space, it has uh, the ability to store a lot of metadata. So I think if that's what you're looking for to store a lot of metadata, maybe. So yeah, I think that's. Um, The answer is it depends, right? Um, the the MD cache layer is great, but anytime you're stacking caches like this, because uh, libcfs has its own, uh, you know, kind of caches a lot of this data as well. So so um, well, it has to for for the caps, right? You know, so it has to to do that for caps. So anytime you're doing that, you always have cache coherency issues that you have to work through. So you know, some things time out, some not, some don't. Um, so. Um, you know, the, the issue, though, is that, you know, you're double caching, too, so you're going to consume a lot more memory if you use the MD cache layer that, that way. Um, the, the one, um, it, it, you know, most of these are in-memory operations, so, and, and all in the same process, so you're probably not going to get a whole lot of benefit from doing that. The one thing that uh, is the problem with libcfs is that it's all under a giant mutex. Uh, and so, uh, you, know, you know, you can get contention on that mutex uh, for uh, if you're doing a lot of threading, if, if you want me, I can t talk to you about it a lot more detail later if you want. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, the question, you know, depending on what you're doing, uh, you know, it, it may help you, but it may harm you too. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, right. So thank you, Jeff. Just ask your question. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, the other part too. Uh, yes, please. What, can we can we get one more? Sorry, uh, one more second. The, <laughs> The other part too is that uh, we don't have any up calls from from uh, libcfs to call into the to Ganesha to invalidate stuff. So if so if we uh, get caps revoked, then uh, uh, and you loot and the metadata changes, it may be difficult for the for Ganesha to know this. Yeah. So okay. yeah. so if you have one Ganesha and it's the only thing that talks to CFFS, it's fine. But if you have two Ganeshas running independently or some CFFS and some Ganesha, yeah. then that's bad. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yes. Uh, any plans for different things to go? So, for example, we, we run Ganesha in a container. Okay. And, like, the core thing to take to make sure it doesn't really break for that. So, you know, perhaps something like Ganesha Wrapped or Ganesha Transaction Wrapped. Uh, right. So, the question is if there is. Uh, any other option for uh, HA as com as related to pacemaker and chorusing, uh, if that's what I hear correctly. So, since I've only used pacemaker and chorusing, I'm not sure what the other uh, uh, the other instrument uh, the other application that you mentioned raft. I think I'm not sure about it. But as far as I know, it's only pacemaker and chorusing that we use for HA in cluster F especially. So.
Oh, sorry. So NFS Ganesh said the good part is that he does not enforce you to do so, use something. So, so we uh, used uh, Zookeeper for HA, and we have written our own uh, d d duplicate request uh, cast DDRC for our own metadata uh, DRC purpose. So it is possible. Yeah, it's it's quite uh, it's 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 quite pluggable architecture. That is the best part of NFS Ganesh, I would say. Is that fast yes, enough? Yes, yes, indeed, indeed, yes. Okay, so you want to add something? Yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's actually some native uh, clustering in, inside uh, there too, if you're using Ceph. Um, so Ceph, uh, we, I, I built a, a, a way to do active-active HA, uh, HA with it using just Ceph uh, on top, of, so using RADOS basically. It, it, it kind of maintains a shared state database between Ganesha servers. I can, I can point you at a, a talk, a couple talks I've given on it if you want to, if you want to see them. So. Any more questions? Yes. Just ask. Just ask. Uh, do you have uh, clients in user space as well? Sorry. Do you, use? Uh, do you have? Uh, clients in user space. Uh, that's right. User space. Clients. Why do you say in user space? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not hearing that. Client access. So do you have user space clients? So for example, user space um, clients. We have a fuse clients. Yeah. A fuse NFS client. Fuse NFS clients. Uh, uh, okay, I what I know is I know about Gluster has a fuse, but I'm not sure if NFS Ganesha has a fuse. Okay. And, so uh, yeah, NFS there, just. So there are NFS client utilities that you can use NFS. Uh, the yeah. NFS protocol from the client side. There are libraries for that, um, but they're not part of the NFS Ganesha project. So NFS Ganesha is really the NFS server. The NFS client is either the Linux client that you have in the Linux kernel or yeah. NFS utilities <coughs> in user space. Yeah. They exist, but yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. For oh, any more questions? Okay. I guess if there's no more questions, then oh, oh. okay. We can we do one more? Sorry. Thank you for your talk. So uh, the question about the clients, so for example, if there are no, for example, system, uh, no single IP is used and no uh, peacemaker or other things, but you have two active active servers and you use something like AutoFS on a, on a client side, so you do multiple connections and how that, how that can work with Ganesha to achieve uh, HA for, for that kind of case. I'm sorry, I, I, did, I, I didn't get the, okay, we have like two servers, H active active. Active, Did active. So you yes, have ten. multiple active nodes, for example, five, ten. Okay. Yeah, and you need to reconnect to every time to different AP. So you don't have peacemaker, you don't check the availability of nodes, but you just, once it failed, you need to reconnect, and you're using, for example, AutoFS for, uh, for like a wrapper for, for, for client to do multiple connections. And, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I don't... I don't think I fully understand your question, but I think uh, what uh, I, I think what you're asking is about the IP connection for IP addresses that the that yeah. the you client have, uses. You have a host name and multiple IPs, so yeah. they would yeah. just so, so the we uh, in, in uh, the NFS Ganesha server has like virtual IPs, uh, VIPs for every uh, multiple IPs for every node in the servers. So yeah, I mean that points you to a different. Like if for failovers, that's what points your different server. So, uh, I, I yeah. But the, 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 the one more than question. So we, we used, for example, kernel NFS for that for 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 ages for some quite of time. But um, we have these timeouts. So we, once once connection is established, it's not so easy to do the switch. So we're always losing time. And uh, with Ganesha in user space, is it something it will be easier, better than? I mean, from the failover part. Okay, from the failover part. Uh, okay, um, I'm not sure about the performance. Okay. Uh, but you know, the logs are transferred to different servers, so your data is preserved. And uh, yeah, I mean, the clients don't even notice the failure in a server. But I'm not sure about the performance. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Okay, that's it.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.